All right, thanks everybody for joining another edition of Free Training Thursday. Uh, just by a show of hands before we get started, uh, if you could please just make sure that you can hear me okay. Please just click that uh, hand raising button there so I know that you can hear me. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and put your hands down. Um, also by show of hands, one more time, if you could please just verify that you can see my screen okay, you should be able to see my Abacus Law Program. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna put your hands down again. All right, my name is Scott Heist. Uh, some of you probably know me well. Uh, I'm a senior product trainer here at Abacus Next. And today we're gonna to be talking about flat fee billing. Uh, this, uh, this webinar is gonna go a little bit longer than the ones that you might be used to in the past. Uh, that's a new routine that we're starting here at Abacus. We're gonna make these a little bit longer for everybody. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure that you utilize the questions box on your GoToMeeting window. You can either utilize that or the chat window. I have my colleague Amanda on the line as well. She will be monitoring, monitoring those questions uh, and we will do our best to address all of them at the end of the webinar. If we run out of time and we can't get to your questions or if your, if your question you know, just requires a general follow-up, uh, I will make sure that I address those after the webinar is over via email or by phone call. So just keep that in mind. If I don't get to your question, don't be alarmed. I will reach out to you personally. So again, today we're gonna be talking about flat fee billing. We're gonna approach today's webinar uh, from two different directions. Now, every firm out there is a little bit different, okay? Smaller firms, you have people that wear many hats. So the person who you know, does the intake process uh, for your new cases may also be the person that runs your bills. Larger firms may have accounting professionals that are dedicated just to generating bills and they don't do anything with the front office portion of the program. So we're going to actually look at both. We're going to start in the abacus law system and then we will kind of work our way over uh, to the uh, accounting system. Before we dive in, to all of those different steps. I just want a, a couple of housekeeping uh, items here. Um, if you are curious about upcoming webinars, do not forget to go to abacusnext.com slash webinars. That is a page, and I will actually bring this over to you uh, on the monitor here that you're looking at so that you can see it. Um, but this is actually a page on our website. Notice abacusnext.com slash webinars. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see that uh, we have all of our upcoming webinars and each one of these is a link, okay? So if you just click on that link, it will take you to a registration page. That could be one of the ways that you actually uh, signed up for today's webinar. So you might already know that, um, but just in case, this is where you go, okay? Also, if you are not familiar with our professional services that we offer, on our website, including training, okay? You need to make sure that you visit our professional services site on our, on our main webpage as well. You can schedule all future training on our website, okay? You don't need to call in to the 1-800 number. You can actually do this yourself. It's a self-service portal. Again, I'll pull that up for you. All you need to do is go to our main webpage, abacusnext.com, click on the Buy Services link, and you will see in the bottom uh, right corner there, there is an option for schedule training and upgrades. So if you need future training on, or more in-depth training rather, on any of the topics that we talk about on these weekly webinars, make sure you go there and you schedule that. We can get you one-on-one -on -one, uh, with one of our training professionals and make sure you get squared away. So again, that's advocacenext.com. Click on the services link and in the bottom right corner, scheduled training. Okay. Now, We'll talk about some other things as we move through uh, today's webinar and when we uh, finish up at the end, but I just wanted to get those two things out of the way. So again, we're back here in our Abacus Law Program. Now again, I, I said you know a lot of the people that do initial case creation are also the people that set billing defaults. So that means that our initial case creators, a lot of times, are using intake forms. And if you are using intake forms to create your cases currently, you've probably noticed that at the end of that intake form generation process, 
you are brought to a screen that allows you to set accounting defaults. Now what I'm going to do, just for training purposes, is I'm going to create a matter from scratch for everybody here so that you can see what that accounting default window looks like. So first thing I'm going to do here is click my add button and I'm going to run through this process very quickly. Uh, while I'm doing this, please think of some questions uh, that you want to ask. So first thing we always do whenever we take on a new case is we have to provide a case code. Okay, we have to classify the type of case that we're creating. This is important because, you know, depending upon the type of case or the type of law that we practice, that usually dictates how we bill. Okay, like a lot of, um, you know, criminal defense, like, you know, uh, DUIs and, you know, stuff like that, um, that stuff's flat fee. Okay, um, divorces and things like that, hourly. Okay, uh, will and trust, uh, things like that, estate planning in general, a lot of times it's flat fee. So you need to make sure that you are creating, uh, you know, the proper case code. Now I'm going to just pretend like we're creating a trust and a state's case here, because usually those are flat fee. Okay, and I'm going to give this a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Scott's Webinar Trust. Okay, and I'll go ahead and click Done down here. This will prompt me to enter in. Oh, always got to do that, by the way. Always got to put an ID number in there. I'm just going to make up a fake one here. I'm sure you probably have an ID structure uh, system in your office. That's normal. Let's try a different one. There we go. So that's going to create my matter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a name to my new matter. If you've tried billing before, this is something you probably already know. If you're new to this, you need to make sure you note this down. Every matter that you want to bill for in our accounting system must have a client link to that matter as the billing party. So after you create your case, make sure you are linking a name. Use that add link button down there in the bottom left and make sure you are linking a name directly to this case uh, as the billing party. So let me find someone here. I'll use Joan Smith. Okay, notice my link type window where I choose my relationship type. So I'm going to choose the relationship type of billing party. Okay, this is very important because when I click done, oh, got to assign an attorney. Sorry about that. That's okay. This is a fake case. So technically we don't need one, but I have that set up as a default. So now that I'm linking this client as the billing party, that updates accounting. I don't know if you just saw that little pop-up right there that said accounting was updated. But the important window that we are presented with is this accounting data window. This is kind of like a properties window for your default settings for accounting. Notice how I can assign specific timekeepers. I can assign specific billing format codes. I can even put in some of my uh, default account settings like prior balances, okay, minimum trust retainers, things like that. Okay, notice I have my trust balance field, prior balance field, all that good stuff. But the important thing here with, you know, uh, relating to what we're talking about today is our billing frequency and billing mode over on the right side of this window, okay. Our billing mode by default inside of this program always defaults to hourly unless you made a change to your settings. But if you're just using this program for the first time, your billing mode for every new matter that you create is always going to default to hourly. So if you are a flat fee firm, you need to be conscious of this and you need to make sure that when you're creating your cases, you are changing that. Change that from hourly to flat fee. Most of the time, flat fee cases are billed at the end of the matter. That's usually the way it's done. So that's what we'll focus on as well. So for your billing frequency, which is going to default to monthly, make sure you change that to the end of matter option or whatever's appropriate for you. Okay. And then anytime you set a billing mode to flat fee, you have to tell the system what that flat fee is. Okay. You always have to put that in. It forces you to do it. 
So if I'm charging, I don't know, $1,000, okay, I have to put that in there under that flat fee field so that the system knows exactly what to put on the bill at the end of the matter when I generate that invoice. Now, once I'm done doing that, in this example, I can go ahead and just click done down in the bottom right. That's going to just run through my little window there, make sure I didn't miss anything uh, that's required. And then it just takes me right back to my main matter screen, okay? So now technically we have set this new matter up as a flat fee matter in accounting, but I cannot stress enough, whenever you create a matter inside of Abacus Law, you will not see it in accounting unless you have a person linked to that matter as the billing party. Doesn't have to be a living, breathing person. A lot of times we're billing companies, that's okay. You still have to have a name record for that company and they still have to be linked as the billing party or else you won't see that in accounting. Now, since we've done that, we can actually close out of our matter, open up our accounting program, and if we go into our matters browse window, notice my uh, matters button there in the top left corner. If we go into our matters browse window, we should see that matter right there in our list. Okay, if we didn't have someone linked this bill to, we wouldn't see it here. So that's a good teaching point. If you ever have an attorney or a paralegal that's looking for a matter inside of accounting but they cannot find it, I will bet you that there probably is not a person linked as the billing party inside of Abacus Law. So that should be the first thing you check, okay? So there we go. We see it. We know that everything is set up fine. Now, after that, we can actually go into our accounting program and we can start managing different billing settings. We can do that underneath of matters and then click matters again or just click that matters button on the toolbar, okay? This actually opens up our matter maintenance window. Okay, our matter maintenance window is again, kind of like our accounting defaults for each of our cases. We have a general window where you know we can assign timekeepers, we can assign our trust account and all that good stuff. But specifically for this session, the billing tab is the important thing. So a lot of the stuff on this billing tab may look very familiar to you because we just saw it inside of our Abacus Law Program when we were creating that matter. So if you are a person for the firm that doesn't have anything to do with Abacus Law, you don't create cases, you don't do any of that, all you do is work in the Abacus Accounting Program, then it may just so happen that you're the one that needs to come into this system and you need to set those defaults. So again, if you get alerted, hey, we just created this new matter in Abacus Law, we need you to go into accounting and set their, you know, their, their accounting defaults. Make sure you open up the accounting program, click that matters button, find that new matter that somebody else created, open it up, go to that billing tab, and make your adjustments to your billing mode and to your billing frequency. Now, the billing format code right here is listed as general. That is potentially something that you will want to change because a lot of times, we don't just do an end of matter for our billing frequency for flat fee cases. We see this a lot actually in criminal defense with like your DUIs and your simple arrests and stuff like that, your misdemeanors and all that. Payment schedules are really big, okay? If I charge a client $5,000 to represent him on his DUI case, chances are I may set that person up on a payment schedule. So I don't know if you noticed what happened right there. When I had end of matter selected, notice my tabs across the bottom. I've got five tabs. Watch what happens when I change that to a payment schedule. See how I get an extra tab there? This is where I get to go in and break out my flat fee payment schedule. So I can come in here and click this tab, and I can choose whether to calculate my flat fee payment based off of installment amount or by number of installments. Notice the system knows that it's $1,000. See that in the top right corner, okay? And then I just get to choose whether it's by installment amount or by number of installments. So if it's by installment amount, then I just need to put in a first due date and then put in whatever I want that amount to be, 
right? If it's by number of installments, then I need to put in a first due date and the number of installments, right? 90% of the time, I think most firms that do, uh, you know, payment schedules, usually it's by installment amount because a client will say to you, hey, I can afford to pay you this month, you know, this much every month. So that, that's the normal way. So I would say, okay, payment is due on, let's see, we'll say the first. Uh, let's see here. Or we'll say, we'll actually say, we'll say that, there you go, the third. Okay, that's first payment due. And then I would say installment amount is going to be $100, okay? And then all I have to do is tell the system what my time interval is. In other words, is this gonna be bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, so on and so forth. So I'll choose bi-weekly. And then I just click my add button and that will generate all of the payment schedules, okay? So if we look at this, I'm gonna see exactly what day a payment is due and for what amount. Okay, notice it has our descriptions over here on the right. So what we've done so far for this case in our matter maintenance window is we've told the system it's flat fee. We told the system what the amount of the flat fee is. We've told the system how we're going to bill it, whether it's end of matter, payment schedule, etc. And then if it is in fact payment schedule, we've gone into our payment schedule tab, and we've determined if we want it by installment amount or by number of payments. And then all we have to do is save that, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, and notice it says modification successfully saved there, just letting this go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna just say end of matter. I'm gonna change that and I'm gonna click save. Oh, gonna change our billing format code. Good catch there. This system is really good about alerting you if you forget to change something, by the way. So I changed that from scheduled flat fee uh, back to end of matter. So the system was just telling me there, hey, you change this, make sure you put in a new billing format code. So I would just change this back to general. Okay, now I can click save. Let's see, oh, oh let's see why, I don't know why it's saying hourly. Let's go ahead and close out of this and reopen. Okay, one more time. Okay, go to our billing tab. We'll leave it payment schedule for now. And we'll go ahead and click done. Because it, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's end of matter or payment schedule, the next step is exactly the same. And that step is actually generating your invoice, okay? Your invoice, the way it looks, is going to be determined based off of that billing format code. So if we just show you that one more time, okay? The billing format code that you select here, that determines the layout just so you know. And if you haven't gone in there and looked at those yet, my suggestion is to run a couple bills with, you know, obviously on fake cases uh, with different formatting codes so that you can see, you know, what the different layouts are. They are customizable. And if you need some training on that, please let us know, okay? But they are different depending upon whether it's flat fee or an hourly case. Okay, so if we click done there, now, in theory, you know, we are working on our case and it's time to generate our invoice and get that in the mail to our client. So with a lot of flat fee cases, we just jump right into printing our bills. For anybody who's done a billing training with me, you've probably been taught the three-step process, right? The first step is pre-bills, second step is print bills, third step is post bills. With a flat fee bill, there's not a whole lot of reason to review it. Uh, you obviously can, um, but there's not a whole lot of reason because there's not a ton of light items in there. It's usually just one line that says, here's the amount you owe for services rendered, okay? So you can run the pre-bill if you want to. I'm gonna jump straight into print bills here, okay? And that will open up our print bill window. Maybe, there we go. And in here, I can add my new matter that we are going to run a bill for. Now I'll go ahead and delete these old ones out of here since we're not worried about those. And I'll go ahead and add a new one. Now, when we add our bill, okay, when we add our matter to the list of bills to be printed, we have all of these different filter types over here on the right. If you are wanting to generate all of your flat fee bills, then all you have to do is choose your billing mode, okay? Filter by billing mode. Just choose that billing mode dropdown, select flat fee, 
and then click select. That will pull up every matter, every active matter, I should say, that has a flat fee uh, assignment. Now, with flat fee billing, you don't see that very often. When you see that a lot is with hourly billing because you usually run your hourly bills at the end of the month. But since flat fee cases are usually billed when they're completed, then uh, you, you usually do them individually. So that's why we have another option in the bill selection window that says select bills individually. And this is where we can go in and we can choose by matter name. Okay, when we click that matter name button, that's gonna open up our matters browse window. We just choose the matter that we wanna run our bill for, and that puts it into our list. Now, once we click add to billing run, that will go ahead and push that. Don't worry about that message there that has to do with my integration. And now we can go in and we can preview this bill, okay? Now, previewing the bill is basically just gonna bring that bill up in like a PDF viewer. So if you need to print it or you need to email it, uh, things like that, um, you're able to do that directly from this window. Remember, your bill is never posted until you actually run through the post bills option, okay? So you can see here, here's my bill. Okay, I've got the name of my case, I've got my matter number, I've got my uh, actual description on my flat, well, I didn't put a description in, but I have the actual amount of the, uh, the bill itself, and then I also have any invoice information uh, that may be there. Um, if you had any trust activity or anything like that, you would see that as well. Now, because we did this as a flat fee, notice I have a breakout here on my second page of all of the amounts that were due and the due dates, okay? So this is giving me kind of a total balance due. As payments come in, I'm gonna see that actually reflected here on my bill. So when that 12-3 payment comes in, it's gonna have the date it's received and it's gonna have the amount, and then that will reflect on the total balance. So every time you generate that bill, it updates this invoice as well. So once you're done looking at this, once you're done printing it, you can go ahead and click the close and stop printing button. And that will just take you right back to that bill selection window. Again, that's the step you're going through when you're actually either printing the bill out or you're downloading it so you can attach it to an email. It doesn't reflect in any of your ledgers until you go back into the billing menu and you post that bill. Okay, you must post your bill after you print it, at least immediately after or within a day or two. Okay, notice that since I ran through that billing process with my flat fee bill, notice it automatically put that into my bills waiting to be posted queue right there. I didn't have to select it. System did it automatically. So all I have to do now is click that, select post, and that will pull up my little accounting prompt here where it's basically asking me uh, to enter in the appropriate post date, okay? Like when did this bill actually post? Did we, you know, send it out today? You know, did we send it out two days ago? You get to actually decide that. And that's, that's good to do just for ledger purposes so that everything kind of matches up, uh, you know, with when you actually did something and when the bank actually receives money and all that good stuff. Okay, so now it's gone from the list. That means that it's actually been posted. So quick recap, two ways you can set up your billing preferences. The first is going to be in the Abacus Law program when you actually add your matter. You can do it there if that's what your role at the firm entails. But if you're just the accounting person, the way you are going to do it is after that matter is corrected, or, or actually, you know, created in the system, or you know, corrected from any error, any billing errors, or anything like that. You're going to come into the accounting program, go into the matter maintenance section, click that little matters button there, find your matter, open it up, go straight to that billing tab, and adjust your billing mode, adjust your billing frequency as required. Once that's done, and it's time to generate those bills. That is all done underneath your billing drop-down menu where you can either run your pre-bills, go directly to your print bill, and then once you're done with that, post your bill. Okay, 
So I will turn it over to my colleague Amanda for any questions that we may have. We will try and get them all answered for you. Amanda? Thank you, Scott. So the first question is, can a payment schedule amount vary? So it can, but you actually have to manually alter it. So, well, let's put it this way. Usually when you are coming up with a payment amount and it's a scheduled payment, usually it's always the same number. But sometimes a client will come to you and say, hey, listen, I can only give you, you know, I know I normally give you 200 bucks a month. I can only give you 100 bucks this month. If that's the case, when you take the payments, okay, when you actually do your payment received, you're going to just put in the amount that they can pay you, okay, just like you normally would, even if it's an hourly case, you would do the same thing. So when you actually go into payments received and enter in the info, you are going to put in the payment amount. Okay, so I'm going to look up my matter here. Okay, and that would show me, see here's my invoice for a thousand bucks. So I would put in whatever my payment amount is on the appropriate date, and it's just going to deduct off of that amount due. It'll still keep your balances updated so that you know the total amount due is still the same, but it still accounts for the fact that that person owes you more money on that particular payment. Whether you accept it or not is completely up to you. So yeah, I mean, you, you can totally do that. All right, the next question is, if there's a flat fee of let's say 2,500 plus $40 in recording costs, don't wanna give the timekeeper the costs and their productivity. Why can't yeah. the flat fee drop down be divided into fees and costs? Well, so you have to add costs and expenses manually. So if you say this is what, you know, you know if it costs $5,000 for me to represent my client, but then I have fine print there that says you're also responsible, you know, for any, you know, expenses that are incurred. You have to create that $5,000 flat fee the way I taught you, but you still have to add your expenses under your cost section inside of your Abacus accounting program. See costs and adjustments. You still have to do it there because if you just added it straight into the payment schedule, it wouldn't look right on your billing balance sheet. They have to be separated from an accounting standpoint. You can't have expenses lumped in with work fees, or, or I should say, you know, hourly rates or uh, flat fees. You, you can't have them lumped in there from an accounting standpoint. So the system is built to keep them separate on purpose because if you get audited, you need them to be separate. The next question is, if we needed to change the way a matter is billed in the middle of a case, can it be changed and all the old billing will still show up the previous way? Yeah, so you're, when you run a bill, it always is saved in, in like a historical format. So you'll always have all those old bills that are attached to your matters in the same flat fee format, so you'll have all that history there. If you need to change a matters billing preference, assuming you have the security permissions to do so, which I'm sure most people on this call probably do, all you have to do is go right into that billing tab and change it and save it, okay? And it will do that. So you'll still have all the history of all the previous billing, all the billing activity that you view under billing, or I'm sorry, matters, matter billing activity, that will all still show appropriately as well. Um, but yeah, you can totally change it in the middle, no worries at all. You actually, we actually see that. It's, it's not uncommon for billing frequencies, billing modes to change on cases pre-litigation and then litigation. It's, it's quite common that that, that happens. So you can, you can definitely do that. All right, Scott, I'm just going to give it a minute, a minute to see if any other questions come through. And while we're waiting uh, for any other questions, don't forget that you have help information directly built in to your system. So if you're in the Abacus Law Program, or if you're in the Abacus Accounting Program, 
both of the menu bars have a little help button. Okay, you can either hit the F1 key on your keyboard, and that will open up a searchable PDF for you, um, or you can just come in here and click the uh, help button, and that will open it up. And you can actually go in there and run searches for keywords like uh, flat fee billing, and it will, you know, give you information on, you know, how to do that. We also have some demonstration videos, so both of those help menus will uh, take you straight into our demo videos that we have on our website. Uh, so that should be pretty helpful. Now. Another thing, while we're, while we're thinking of questions there, um, for those of you who are accepting electronic payments, okay, credit card payments, uh, electronic check, things like that, you need to ask yourself, is my current processing program uh, the best that I can you know, get, really, is what it comes down to. Because a lot of times, firms shy away from taking credit card payments, uh, and electronic payments because of fees and things like that, annual fees, monthly fees uh, from you know companies like LawPay or PayPal and things like that. So if you are a company that is either currently taking electronic payments or um, is uh, a firm that's looking to branch out uh, to do that so you can offer more options to your clients, make sure you look into the Abacus Payment Exchange, okay? If you just Google uh, Abacus Next Payment Exchange, uh, you will find all kinds of great information uh, on that uh, service that we provide. It's completely free to you, by the way, because you're Abacus Law users. So uh, you don't have to pay any annual fees, any monthly fees. Uh, you just pay the normal uh, transaction service charge like any other uh, credit card company or any payment processing company. So it ends up being a, a lot cheaper than uh, some of the other ones out there. So make sure you look up APX, Abacus Payment Exchange. And provide you some good solutions there. Okay, our next question is, can you set up different flat fees for different events in the matter example? 250 for court app, yeah. 500 to draft petition, etc., and bill each entry when the event happens. Yeah, so court costs, drafting position, uh, or, well, court costs would actually be an expense, by the way. So that's, that's not considered, um, Something that 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 would a court a court cost would be um, essentially a hard cost. That's something that we're rolling down to our client. So generally, you're going to pay that out of like a trust account or out of an operating account, and then that gets tacked onto a bill as an expense, kind of like um, you know, kind of like mileage or uh, court reporting fees and stuff like that. So that would be entered as a cost inside of the accounting program. Now there is a need sometimes or firms to bill a flat fee, but still track the work on a line-by-line -line basis of what's been done. So if that's the case, when you set your matter up inside of this program, you should actually set it up as an hourly case, okay? If you set it up as an hourly case, then you can actually create time tickets. They may have a zero value, but you can put in on every time ticket, and I'll show this to you. And I think this will answer your question here. Every time ticket, you have the ability to choose the time ticket type, okay? Is it a flat charge, or is it being uh, billed against an hourly rate? Okay, so if I choose flat charge, now I can actually just put in a flat value. You're, it's still considered a time ticket, but you're putting in a flat value. So if I charge, oh, I don't know, I'm just completely making this up. Let's say I charge my client 20 bucks every time I have to visit them in jail, okay? I'm just going to make that a flat charge, put in a value of 20 bucks, and now that's not, you know, something that's being multiplied against an hourly rate, and in theory, it's not a total, uh, you know, it can still be added on to my flat fee case. So just open up your time ticket, choose flat charge, put in the amount. But just don't, don't do that if it's an expense. If you are actually incurring a cost for your service, like gas mileage or a hotel fee or a court reporting fee or postage, those are soft costs and hard costs. So if that's the case, those need to be entered into the accounting program underneath your costs menu. 
Okay. Don't confuse the two, or your books will not look good. On a flat fee client, the client calls regarding an issue that is not part of the flat fee. Why can't an override be done? Well, so again, you just add it. You can you can make any. So this cost and adjustments window isn't just for expenses. I guess I should just say that. So if you have one-off scenarios where you're charging a client, you know, I don't know, again, $5,000 for the DUI. And then for some reason, whenever he calls you, you're going to charge him some sort of, you know, it's not really an expense. It's just more of like a time expense. Then this isn't just for costs. You can also make adjustments here as well. Okay. So I can come in here and I can create a code for, you know, phone conversations. Okay. So what I would do is I would, you know, choose my matter. I would come in here to my, even though it says client expense code, a technically an expense, but you know, I could just add a new one called, let's call it PH phone calls. Okay. Choose whether you, now I, I could call this a fee. I guess that would technically be a good one. And then even do maybe a, a, an item per, but usually with a fee, what you're going to do is uh, once you choose that is you're going to put in the amount. So phone calls, and then right here, see where it says cost per item, number of items, amount. So I would just come in here and I would say, okay, every time you call me, I'm charging you $25. Okay, you called me three times today, you know, so I'm going to, you know, put in three right here. So make sure you choose debit, though. Okay, it has to be a debit if you want that to show on the invoice, on the invoice. If you choose credit, it's almost as if you are discounting that amount. So make sure you choose debit with a bill type of unbilled. That will ensure that when you run the next invoice, not only does it put your, your flat fee on there, but it also puts uh, any additional adjustments and expenses on there as well. And to the second part of your question, why can't you just do like an amended one? Because that's not how accounting programs are designed. That's, that's, that goes against the whole idea of keeping uh, the accounting books in order. They, they need to be separate uh, items put in, you know, actually entered into the appropriate area of the program. All right, any more questions out there, Amanda? Yes, so is there any way to keep track of payments received on behalf of the client for a settlement they would receive and then split up the fees for the firm and the remainder to them? So payments received are always shown underneath a matter billing activity. So you can always go into matters, matter billing activity, look up your matter, and let's see, I might have one in here that has some of that. But you can look up your matter. You can see right here, I've got check number 500 against invoice number two. I've got $1,000 check number 500 against invoice number two. So it looks like it was a total of 2,500 bucks there paid in two separate checks. So you can always look up that information there. Um, if you are, you know, if we're talking settlement, um, that's going to be, you know, most likely our civil litigation. Uh, matters or potentially our personal injury uh, firms. So if you have the personal injury or the civil litigation uh, PALS, practice area legal solution, that we offer for those two uh, practice areas, you actually have custom screens inside of your program. Let's see here. Here's a personal injury case. You actually have custom screens specific for settlement information, okay? So you may want to look into that if you don't already uh, have those specialty versions. If you're a personal injury firm, that uh, personal injury specialty version is very handy. If you are a civil litigation firm, uh, same thing. So we have specialty versions for just about every practice area you can think of. So it might be something that is useful for you. If you don't, if you just have the generic program, 
then you can always find any sort of billing activity, whether it's you know bills being posted, payments being received, you can always find those under your matter billing activity. And then you can always view the details of each one of those. Right here under view time, show bills, you can even see trust activity as well. So check those buttons down there along the bottom. All right, so as a follow up to the question um, regarding an override, um, the attorneys are entering a time ticket for productivity. Why can't the time ticket have an override? Time tickets do. Well, I, first of all, I'm not sure what you mean by override. Every, every time ticket has different options inside of it. So if I, if I open up a time ticket, this does not mean that I have to do some sort of multiplication between my hourly rate and the billable hour on that item. It just defaults to that because it's a time ticket. The whole purpose of a time ticket is because you're trying to do some sort of math against the amount of time that you spent. But we have override capability by giving you other options like flat charge, no charge, non-billable, and if you have a specific trial rate or a miscellaneous no charge. Okay, so this, this kind of does act like an override. If you notice here, my timekeeper is me, okay? My system knows that my default rate is $300 an hour, okay? It knows that my billable was a tenth of an hour, so it's giving me a value on this time ticket of $30, right? Let's change that to one hour, just so it's a little easier on the eyes. Either way. So once it does, once it calculates that, that, that doesn't mean that you have to charge $30 in this time. We can just click flat charge and charge whatever I want. See, 500. So, and then you just need to put in the description about whatever that is. But the reason, I mean, the reason the system does that is because the whole purpose of a time ticket is to create value based off of your time. If you're doing a, you know, if you're just accounting for some sort of flat, you know, charge, then that's either most likely going to be some sort of cost or expense, or you can choose flat charge in the time ticket window. So let me know if that, let me know if that clears it up for you. If you need more info, I can give you a call to talk about it if you need. All right. I think those are all the questions for now, unless you have anything to add, Scott. I do not. That just about covers everything. All right. I want to thank everyone for attending today, and thank you to Scott for leading this great presentation. As a reminder, this will be posted on our website as well as sent to all attendees. You can also email webinars at abacusnext.com with any additional questions. Thank you, Scott. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for joining.